Hello everybody, this is Mad Cat Sphere, and uh, I'm here to talk about um, the fact that there's no hell in the afterlife. Now, I've already talked about this in my other video, um, talking about the fact that there is no hell. But the other video has some problems with the audio, so I'm going to have to redo it over again now. Um, just to get right into it, um, what is going on is that, you know, you always hear about these people that die, um, have near-death experiences to be more specific. Um, the thing is, though, is that these people... Um, what they're having is what I call a spiritual hallucination. They're not really experiencing something that is totally real. It's kind of a contradiction. It's kind of hard because um, I don't know why when you have a near-death near -death experience, why the spirits would allow you to have these kind of hellish, kind of demonistic, terrible experiences. But what it is, is that I'm going to tell you, is that when you pass away, when you have a near-death experience, you're in near-death. I talked about near-death already. You're near-death. You're not dead yet. So what's going on is that your spirit is leaving your body, but it's still tethered in the quantum level, in the in the fabric of space and time, in the quantum foam of space and time. Uh, um, there, it's, it's still tethered. You know, it's still stuck to the body, the living body, and the living body is just um, like a machine, like a meat puppet, you know, I don't want to say it like that, but that's what it is, and that it's like a, it's like a, it's like a momentum driven thing, and um, there's a lot of um, uh, anxieties, anxieties and fears that the, that the spirit, um, like when you have a near-death near death experience, what it is, is it's almost like falling asleep and having a bad dream, a bad nightmare. And um, since when you have a near-death experience, what's going on is that you're having an experience when you're seeing hell and burning flames and all that stuff. It's kind of like um, anchored and kind of um, persuaded toward what you feared when you were living. It's the anxieties of the psyche, the anxieties of the psyche of who you were when you were uh, healthy and walking and the spirit is tethered with that with those things because when you have a near-death experience you're not dead you're near death so you're experiencing a near-death experience and so what's going on is that you're having a spiritual hallucination and so when you're having a spiritual hallucination the reason is is because the body uh, you know this is the body this is spirit your, your your spirit is lifting away from the body but in the quantum level in the fabric of space and time, it's there's some still uh, it's still um, tethered to the to the living, and it's tethered to the psyche. The psyche is still in some ways functioning um, as though it was alive, like as though it was sleeping with all the fears. And as it's going through that, it's sending that information to the spirit. So basically, what it is that it's almost as if you're not dead but that you're just having visual hallucinations, visual anxieties, like a bad dream when you have a near-death experience. When, and, and that's what causes because you're bringing, what, what you're doing is that you're height, heightening the fears of what you had when you were alive. And, you know, when you go to church, you hear about hell, when you hear about demons and, and, uh, and God condemning you and you know, all of those stuff. And what, you, what, what is happening is that you're not, you're not fully detached. When you die, when you pass away, when you really die and your body is dead, your body, your, your spirit rips away from the tether in the smallest levels, the quantum film, it rips away. And what it does is that because it, 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 it then is able to experience the true essence of the divinity of the afterlife, the true divinity of death, of the true divinity of uh, purity and peace. Because it's no longer tethered to the body. And so when you have a near-death experience, when you have these kind of weird kind of experiences and these kind of negative visions and feelings and, and all these things, it's because your body has not ripped away totally from the living body. Your spirit hasn't ripped away from the living body totally. You're not dead, dead. You're not dead. You're not deceased officially. You know, so... What it is, is that there's a conflict between the living and the spirit. There's a conflict. And so that conflict then creates, you know, and uh, tries to make sense of what's going on. 
your, your, your spiritual self is trying to see the lights and try to see the purity of, of peace, but the living body is still kind of twitching and kind of sending the information of the anxieties and fears of what, you know, you know, it, it's, it's still alive, you know, there's still some small um, neurological uh, function and, and some small heart function, the, 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 it's not like fully blood flow, but there's still some neurological function to where it can still affect the soul. And so it sends those fears and what it is that when you're near the experience and you have a hell, a hell experience, instead of seeing angels, what it is is that it's a spiritual hallucination because the, the, the anxieties and the, and the fear and the psyche of the living body is affecting the soul. It's affecting it because it hasn't totally ripped away. Like even though the soul lifts up from the body, the soul lifts up from the body, it's still tethered in the quantum foam, it's still tethered and connected to it in the smallest levels, it hasn't fully de detached. So the physical body is still sending all those anxieties and fears and negative things to the spirit. And that's where the idea of hell comes from. You know, the uh, I think that the first idea of hell was probably like a mistake from an individual who passed away probably from the ancient times and they passed on this information of fire because i think that you know uh, back in the primitive ages they all feared fire fire burns you would hurt you but it was it was but fire was negative but it was also very fascinating and they didn't understand it so when people had near-death experiences back in the 1400s 1200s you know, before uh, um, um, before uh, death, you know, be, be, uh, AD, I uh, know uh, after death, uh, um, be, you know, before all that time, you know, um, be, before the death of Christ or whatever, people had those fears, and and they had simple minds, and all they had was what they saw, and so when they had near -death, near death experiences, and they came back from the near death, not all of them had negative, but when the negative ones came back. That's how I think the Bible was created too. I think the Bible was created because of those negative experiences of near death. And so um, the poets and the people who were writing the Bible heard about these near death experiences and heard about the burning flames, which were from, you know, the anxieties of the body, fearing fire, burning fire, you know, around the, you know, sitting around a fireplace in the camping site, you know, back in those days. It, it was something that was very negative. It, it burnt you, but it was fascinating. And so, like, the poets and the writers constructed this whole thing and scheme in the Bible to create this whole thing. That, that there's a hell, but there is no hell. That's my idea about hell, is that there is no hell at all. And so, um, you know, that's what I want to share with you guys. It's not going to be a long video. I want to get that with you. And what it is, that just spiritual hallucination. There is no hell. The reason why there is a hell, or there's... It doesn't have to be hell. It just has to be something negative, you know, like uh, like um, not hearing or seeing things, not feeling, being in complete darkness. It seems like it's for, for eternity. Hearing screams and yells, it's all from the body. It's all, it's a near death experience. You're not dead because the only way that you're gonna, the only way that you're gonna know anything negative is from a near death experience. It's from a person who's not dead that's experiencing the anxieties of the living body as they lay in near death and they came back to tell you what they saw and experienced that's where the negativity comes from because they haven't fully died so they can go to the peace of heaven and so they're experiencing near death experience they're experiencing the anxieties of the body and all the fears that they had when they're living and it was it's like a dream what it is and then the spirit comes back and completely um um becomes um fused again completely fused with the body they come back and they tell their stories and that's where all the negative ideas of hell and, and bad spirits came from. That's where it came from. That's how the spirit, uh, the Bible is constructed, I believe. So, uh, it's rich suspicious and there is no hell. I wanted to just make another video to tell you guys that. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. And uh, this is rich suspicious. Thank you guys for watching. God bless. There's no hell. Don't worry about it. It's a spiritualist nation. And it's only, you only experience hell when you're in a near-death experience and you're living body has not fully died and when it hasn't fully died you come back and you tell them your ne negative experience because you're because you're getting the negative ne negative experience from your own psyche 
because you haven't detached from your psyche. Your soul hasn't detached. So you're having a bad dream is what it is. The rich says, but I think I watching.